Hello everybody, Luke Scholl at Field Grounds for Rex Hybrid. Today's September 8th and we're now transitioning from the growing season into the harvest season. So what are those considerations to take into account? In particular, what are those considerations that may lead you down the path of getting the corn combine running a little sooner than anticipated? The corn behind me, like many fields, was planted May 20th. It's actually not even mature. It's only about half milk line, which would be somewhere in that 14 to 18 days away from maturity. However, there are still already some indications that would help us to understand we need to get that corn combine running sooner rather than later. The good news is, it looks to be a, a, a rather large harvest. Now, a large harvest usually transitions into a long harvest, and because of the challenges with storage, this year it may even be labor issues at the elevator or on your own farm. However, Mother Nature has also dealt us a few, a few curveballs. As of late, we've really seen disease and disease infestation within the crop canopy really ramp up. A lot of that is due to humidity levels that we had over the past few months. So in front of you, you can see the average relative humidity at several or three of the research stations OSU has throughout the state. You didn't need this data in front of you to know this, but it does emphasize the fact that we had a really humid growing season. And because of that humidity levels, we have a lot of disease that's run rampant, into, particularly into those more susceptible hybrids or those untreated fields uh, that weren't treated with the fungicide. Secondly is nitrogen. We know that the, the more deficient a plant becomes from a nitrogen standpoint, the more invasive disease becomes. Some areas of the state had an enormous amount of water, an enormous amount of rainfall that delayed weed harvest in July that also led to a fair amount of nitrogen uh, loss or denitrification. And then some areas of the state were also particularly dry in that second, third, fourth week of July. A really, really critical period for nitrogen uptake. Water is the transportation to get that nitrogen in the plant. So for opposing reasons, some fields may be nitrogen deficient. When nitrogen is deficient, plants become, or that corn plant becomes more invasive to disease. And then lastly, tar spot. Particularly Route 30 and North, tar spot as of late has come into, into the equation. Good news is I don't expect it to be highly impactful to yield, maybe not impactful at all. However, if you're about Route 30 and North, plenty of fields have been infected into that doe or early dent stage, that even if yield isn't impacted negatively, I do expect stall quality to be challenged along the way. So already we have a good indication, even though the corn isn't necessarily mature in a lot of areas, we already have some indications we may need to get this harvest started sooner rather than later and preserve that stall quality as long as it is within the field. So how would I think about prioritizing those fields? Number one would be those fields that weren't treated with a fungicide. Also those fields that are more susceptible to disease and they weren't treated with a fungicide. What about those fields that were nitrogen deficient, maybe because of excessive or limited water, and then those fields that were affected rather late by tar spot. Let's make sure that we're proactive in that harvest schedule to make sure we don't turn a already probably long harvest into an even lengthier harvest. Thanks for tuning in, have a great day.